WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We're moving all around the state of Maryland, doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour all month long, getting ready for the football season. Luke is in Owings Mills. You can always find him at Baltimore Luke. And, of course, the Crab Cake Tour powered up by our friends at the Maryland Lottery in conjunction with Window Nation as well as Goodwill and the Restaurant Association of Maryland. Uh, we're getting out on the road, and, you know, there's a little summer thing happening. I'm going to be in Ocean City next weekend, and summer and reading and books and being an author myself, re-releasing Purple Rain 1 and 2 this this summer, I'm going to be re-releasing uh, Peter Principles as well as the Orioles heat up a pennant race around here. Uh, people are writing books, and uh, on top of Cality, I've been waiting to have uh, Jason Reed on the program. The book is The Rise of the Black Quarterback and What It Means for America. Certainly a very, very timely subject here in Baltimore, Maryland, as Lamar Jackson uh, probably is going to get the next biggest contract uh, in the NFL. And uh, Jason, first off, good day to you. Happy football season. Uh, it would have been nice to have you on in June or July. Now we get into the mojo of all this. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have games happening every week and gambling, uh, as we do as well. Um, congrats on the book, man. I know it's doing well. I see it all over the place, and uh, it's a blessing to have you on today. How's life, man? Uh, it, life is good, man, and thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. All right, well, let's go to the seat of this. I've been a knucklehead a couple times and said, going to write a book and then you start to write the book and you get into it and you start to learn things you didn't know and that's probably why you start to write the book to begin with so give me the arc of of the, the actual thesis of this and putting this together and why here and now well you, you know it, it, so much of what you just said is absolutely 100 percent accurate and i back in 2019 2000, 2019 2020 uh that nfl season the nfl was commemorating its 100th season and I talked to some people, and you know, specifically Doug Williams, the, the first quarterback to uh, start in the Super Bowl and win the game's MVP award. Doug and I were at dinner, and he was, we were talking about the upcoming season. And you know, he had mentioned to me about the fact that like, there were all these young black quarterbacks in the league more than ever before who were either stars or potentially could become stars. And you know, I thought about that. So I went to my bosses at ESPN, my editors, and I said, you know, with the league commemorating its 100th season, black quarterbacks, historically the most marginalized group in the NFL, if these guys could do something this season that they had never done before, well, you know what, I, I'd like to spend the whole year kind of chronicling that. And my bosses thought it was a good idea. So they they let me do this project and they let me lead this project. Other people were involved with it. And as it turned out, um, there's a guy in Baltimore who starts for the Ravens. His name is Lamar Jackson. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, <laughs> we talk about him a little around. Yeah. Here. Well, you know, he. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. He was going into his first season as the Ravens week one starter. He had started the previous year after transition, the team transition from Joe Flacco to him. But this would be his first season as the week one starter. And the team had tore down the offense and rebuilt it around him. Well, Lamar Jackson, in his first full season as a starter, became only the second quarterback in NFL history to win the AP NFL MVP award unanimously. The other guy, the only other quarterback to win it unanimous, unanimously was a guy named Tom Brady. Um, Patrick Mahomes with the Kansas City Chiefs, he was the previous year's winner of the AP MVP award. Well, that year, he led the Chiefs to their first championship in 50 years, and he won the, the Super Bowl MVP award, becoming at the time, only 24 years old, the youngest player in the league to have a league MVP award, a Super Bowl trophy, and a Super Bowl MVP award. Uh, Kyler Murray, who was the number one overall pick in the draft that year, he was voted the AP Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, uh, Russell Wilson had a great year. Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys had a great year. Deshaun Watson had a great year. Collectively, black quarterbacks had never done what they did that season. And when you look at the history of the NFL, because of how marginalized they were, it actually did turn out to be the year of the black quarterback in the NFL's 100th season. So I'm going to the, uh, to, to the airport from Miami after the Super Bowl. Literally, I'm in the Uber going to the airport. And this literary agent, I see this number I, I don't recognize. And I usually don't answer numbers I don't recognize, but for some reason I did. And it's this literary agent. Um, and he says to me, hey, uh, he introduces himself. He says, I've been following your season long series and I really think there's a book here. And so I took down his information and I told him I'd call him, you know, when I got a chance to unwind. I mean, I'm going to the airport to go home. Well, while I'm waiting for my flight, I see another number that I don't recognize. And for some reason I answered that one. And it's another literary agent saying, hey, I'm so-and-so, I've been following this project, I think there's a book here. Well, I took that as a sign. 
Okay. So I, uh, well, you're the same. I mean, John Eisenberg's a mentor, dear friend of mine. John's working on a project of similar. And, you know, Shaq Harris was here in the early days of the Ravens, and I got to know Shaq. So, like, talking to players and covering the league for 27 years, I, I, I'm not shocked that there, that there are a lot of books about this and that there is a, it's just different. It's it's different than Elway, Montana, and Marino, right? We're we're in a different era now, and and the games play differently now too. Absolutely, absolutely, it is, it is a different era. I mean, I I really look at it now as the era of the black quarterback, and I say that because if you if you look at the league, you know there are all these superstar franchise black quarterbacks who are at the top of the league. They have the biggest contracts in the league. They have all this power that you know at one time that was just un, you know unimaginable. Additionally. If we look at the you know the, the colleges, the traditional college powers, the USC's, the Alabamas, the Ohio States, all led by by superstar black quarterbacks. At the high school level, you know, I started as a high school reporter covering recruiting way back in the day. You would never see black faces at these elite quarterback camps. Now you see black faces all over, even at the youth football level. So there's this pipeline coming from youth to high school to college. And now in the NFL, you see Trey Lance just got handed the keys in San Francisco. Justin Fields is going to his second year in Chicago. So it would not be surprising at all in another five, eight, ten years to see superstar black quarterbacks leading half the teams in the NFL. Where are you on the Lamar contract situation? Certainly um, this has been... And an interesting ride for ownership, right? I'd say of all the the things the Browns have done and Haslam, Haslam's kind of screwed every, but but the, the money's there. And now, and there, there's no more, we're not where Warren Moon was. And I had Warren on six months ago at the Super Bowl where back in the 80s, this was a different, I, I, I don't think anyone looks at the quarterback and say, is he worth it? Is he not worth it? It's just a lot of money against the cap and numbers and whether the money's guaranteed. And the Deshaun Watson deal is is changing everything, let alone the jurisprudence side of that, right? That's its own that's its own thing. And I'm sure uh you you've been doing all the research on that as well. But what it's gonna mean for Lamar contractually if he doesn't get guaranteed money now or that he would settle for less than that, because this has become more this contract negotiation has become more than about Steve and and Lamar or the Ravens and Lamar, this is more about setting the bar for, for the, the next round. And he really can't take less money and shouldn't take less money than guaranteed money that, for better or worse, Haslam gave Deshaun Watson out in Cleveland. Look, I mean, he has an AP MVP award. So that changes the bar right there, Okay. He's, he's only the second quarterback in the history of the game to win the award unanimously. No one else okay, was voted. It was just him. He was a unanimous winner. If memory serves, the Ravens are like 37 and 12 with him under center. Deshaun Watson, and again, I the jurisprudence aside, Deshaun Watson is a fabulous quarterback. Okay, he's a superstar. And the fact that the Browns gave him that money, when quarterbacks come up, when superstar elite franchise quarterbacks come up, they reset the bar. That's just the way it is. They they they, they reset the contract situation. Joe Flacco explained that to me, and the day after he got the deal, he was right. The money just kept coming for other players, and then he suddenly wasn't the best, but he's sucking up 23% of their salary cap, right? right. And, and, and then it becomes much harder to win for any team, black, white, east, west, AFC, north, wherever, when you have that $50 million quarterback – I mean, the Chiefs are finding that out. It's it's much harder to win. It is. But, but you know, that's just one of those, real, like, there are realities in life. There are realities in this league. And, you know, the 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 Browns reset the market. Okay? that That's just the way it is. And now Lamar was coming up. Now, if the, if the Ravens had, you know, been – I'm not criticizing the Ravens because I get how the process works. But had they been more proactive, they could have saved themselves some money. Okay? But but they decided, and I should say not just decided, the situation worked out to where nothing had gotten done. And now there's this other contract out there that's setting the market. And unfortunately for the Ravens, there's no way you can comp Lamar to Deshaun Watson and Lamar makes less money because Lamar has something that Deshaun doesn't, a league MVP award. And, and 37 I and 12. And, and not 25 plus women running around saying he's he's sexually assaulted them. 
Yeah, I mean, so you know, you, all these things have to get factored in. I mean, but if we just look at the on the field stuff, the thirty seven and twelve and the unanimous MVP, I, I I can't I can't get around that in my head. You know what? I, and you know, I I in my in my day job, uh, you know, I'm an NFL senior writer for ESPN, and I and I talk to agents and I talk to executives. You you can't comp Lamar under Deshaun Watson. You I mean, you you just can't do it. Now, from the Ravens' perspective. The Ravens play a way that really no other team in the NFL plays. Okay. They do things within their offense because of Lamar's unique skill set that has enabled Lamar to be as effective as he is. Now, if I'm with the Ravens and I'm trying to get this done, I know what the, I know what his value is. But, you know, internally, I'm not, I wouldn't be shocked if there's an argument going on. Okay, well, if we didn't play this way and and he, you know, he gets if he gets if he would get hurt because of the way we play, you know, is that something that we try to ding him on in the contract? I, I don't think you can do that because that's the way you play, but is it potentially a consideration? No, I wouldn't be shocked if it's not a consideration. Um, Lamar is very difficult because of the way the Ravens have done this. The Ravens realized what they needed to do to maximize his ability. They tore the thing down and they built it around him in a way no other team plays. He has been, incredibly successful doing that you know and you know again we i want to go back to deshaun watson for a second deshaun watson if memory serves has one playoff career victory lamar has one playoff career victory so even on that end of it like if you're the, if you're the ravens you can't say well you know if you one thing was patrick mahomes who, who just got that money you say well lamar yeah you both have mvp awards but he has a super bowl trophy he has all these playoff victories but it's not. They they both have Deshaun and Lamar both have one playoff career victory. So it's a very difficult situation. And you know, you you, you think to yourself, well, they, they're going to get this done. There's no way they can. I mean, but you never know. Well, there's palpable anger at Haslam, right? I mean, really has put Bashadi in a bad spot as a partner in the league and. I can hear it both. I've been at this from the beginning of time, too. I know how agents play it. I know how Ozzy had to play it and be the bad guy. I know how the ownership, play, like all of that. The one thing I'd say about the Ravens is when they went all in on Lamar and drafted him, moved back into the first round, got the extra year with him, jettisoned Flacco, all of that. I, I They were the only team willing, willing to completely revamp their entire franchise really around him and around a strong kicker and the history of defense and all that, but what they're doing offensively, what they brought Roman in to continue to do here. Um, th they're never going to throw the ball enough to make a, 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 you know, a loud wide receiver happy. There's, there's never gonna be a wide receiver. That's going to have 12 for 221 in this off. It's just not going to happen. And th that is its own sort of weird issue with Hollywood Brown with, Who's going to catch the ball? I'm not convinced they ever really want to throw the ball. So I, I, that's the weirdness of his contract because there's no other quarterback that you'd say, we're going to give you $50 million, but we don't want you to really throw the ball. Well, I mean, th this is the way they play. You know, like I, look, I point to week five last year uh, against the Colts. He passes for 442 yards, four touchdowns, two two-point conversions, leads a 19-point a come-from-behind victory. Now, that was a career game for him, and the Ravens don't want to play that way. I mean, they played that way that game because they had to play that way to get that, that game to win, but that's not the way they want to play. They don't want to have, you know, a couple of, uh, of one, you know, they don't want to have a couple of uh, 100 yard catch wide receivers. That's not, that's not what they're looking to do. They're, they're, they're looking to play the way they feel they have to play to win. And look, they're 37 and 12 with him under center. So, I mean, it, it, it's working out, but all those things you just said, you know, you're not going to keep a, a a wide receiver happy who's a guy who feels he's an elite guy who should be catching 120 balls a year. You're not going to play a certain way where if if he if he doesn't do what he does with his legs, there's no doubt. I mean, he's he's better. He's improved at passing and i can point to metrics to say that look since he's come in the league hey he has improved and there are things that he does well but he's never going to be you know a dak prescott um you know who's who, who's going to drop back there and and you know you'll, you'll put it up 45 times with him and, and you know you can do that and you feel good about it that's not the way the ravens play and it's not the way they want to play but all like like you said all these things factor in 
So are you going to guarantee a guy $230 million or in his case, 240? But again, you know, Haslam, I, I hear what you're saying. And, and I understand why, you know, people in Baltimore in, in, in that front office are not happy. The bar has been set though. And you can't let this play out. I mean, what are you, what are you going to start doing? You know, tagging him. I, I mean, that that's not, well, that's be. what you think. You think, well, we'll just tag him. I'm, I'm not completely convinced he's playing on September 11th if they don't have this done. I'm not completely convinced of that, that it's a good idea for him to go out there and play for a million dollars a week when he should have $80 million sitting in a bank. I mean, if I'm his dad, if I'm his big brother, if I'm his friend, I would say to him, do not play. The next time you step on the field, you need to be a made man, Lamar. I mean, it's time. It's it's you. They need to marry you. And th- – and I'm pro Raven and I'm 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 pro management on most of these things, but they gotta figure this out because to your point, this well, we'll just tag him, screw him. You know, the NFL Players Association gave us this loop. Okay, that's that sounds all good, so you actually go and do it. And especially when you're trying to deal with your franchise quarterback. Yeah, because franchise quarterbacks, like you, you don't trade these guys and you don't let them go away because there aren't that many of them out there. So, you know, the, the whole tag situation. And again, I mean, we're, we're getting down the road here because, you know, they might announce something tomorrow. Who knows? Well, the desperation shown to go get Deshaun Watson shows like what the market would be. But that market might be different for Lamar, because if you don't have the personnel, you're going to have to make the personnel happen if you bring Lamar in and, and, and I, yeah. For, yeah. for any team in the league. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I go back to something you said a, sec- a minute ago. Remember when he was coming out? Like Bill Polian, I mean, the great Bill Polian, you know, mastermind of those four Bills, Buffalo Bills Super Bowl teams. They didn't win, but they got there. Uh, the, the guy who, you know, in Indianapolis, you know, they, he's the team president, they, they, they win a Super Bowl there with Peyton Manning. Bill Polian is, is a great talent evaluator. I mean, he's one of the best to ever do it. Bill Polian was like, hey, this guy's a wide receiver. This guy's a running back. He's not a quarterback. Now, what Bill Polian later said was he did not see into the future the way John Harbaugh did, the way Ozzie Newsom did, the way you know Eric Costa did. He he did not see what what they saw. And okay, but what you just said was absolutely right. The other teams didn't either. And the question is, you know, when when Deshaun Watson was available, yes, Deshaun Watson is a great athlete, but Deshaun Watson wants to play in the pocket. And can play for any team in the pocket. If you if if you're Lamar, are you going to go to a team that will not just get the personnel, but will also revamp it completely? Because it's not just that the Ravens went out and did the things that they needed from a personnel from a personnel standpoint. There was a commitment in the organization from top to bottom that this is what we're going to do. Like that that takes a lot. Okay, that's well, that's that, when that's, you bring Willie Sneed in to crack down that's when you bring nick boyle in and you you turn a defensive lineman and patrick ricard into a, a, an all pro fullback i mean they've pieced this together in a way that most executives would never be willing to give their one shot in the nfl and say we're gonna do it we're gonna zig while everybody else is zagging most people don't have ownership on board with that the confidence level to draft their way through it and trying to do something that ain't never been done before they'd rather lose with a pocket quarterback um you know go to the next joey harrington or the next achilles but wherever you name any of those guys they'd rather lose with that guy than draft a kid that everybody else passed on in the first round and we're going to go out there and run a navy offense right i mean that's a whole different level of commitment that these guys in owings mills are truly um, forward think pioneers in doing this. Oh, and that, and you know, look, I'm, I'm a thousand percent on board on that because, you know, I remember I was sitting in the draft that year, um, you know, you know, and when they, when they did what they did in the draft to go get him, I was like, okay, but like, you know, Flacco is not Lamar Jackson, obviously. So I'm thinking this is going to, if, if this is going to work, if they're going to truly be committed to this, they're going to have to change things at some point. Well, you know, they do it his rookie year. They, they, they 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 were forced to do it because of the, you know the situation you know with, with Flacco being at the end and and the, the team trying to you know make a move he he goes on a great run I mean they didn't revamp it completely when he got into that that rookie year but then in that off season for them to make that commitment I mean most teams most teams wouldn't do that 
You know, most teams just would not let, you know, take that chance because like you said, most teams would rather play traditionally the way you're going to do it in a, in a pro style offense and lose with a guy who's a drop back guy, then change everything around. Because here's the thing, you know, I, I give them a lot of credit because what if this doesn't work? Okay. What if, what if they do this? And, and I'm not even talking about working from the standpoint that he becomes a, a unanimous MVP. I just mean, what if it doesn't work that they're not even a team that can, can, you know, be in playoff contention. Like that's why this thing was such a bold move and, you know, Harbaugh showing once again, why he's one of the best coaches in the NFL. And I, all that gets factored in. If you're the Ravens and you're sitting Owings Mills thinking about all this stuff, all of that has to be factored in for them, but now for Lamar, well, no, that, you know, that, that doesn't get factored in for him. It's just his performance, but there are realities from the Ravens standpoint, which is another reason why I think this is also hard for them that we haven't gotten to what well, we haven't seen the deal announced is because, yeah, you know, they went all in on him in a way that no other team would. And yeah, they were rewarded for it. They were rewarded spectacularly for it, but okay. You know, if he goes somewhere else, could he get this type of money? And I think that's a legitimate question. I, I mean, I, I don't think that that's in any way, uh, you know, besmirching Lamar or denigrating him in any way. I mean, they are, this thing is difficult. They already love him more than anybody else could ever have loved him because of the of, of the way this thing is. And I think that that's also baked into this thing now that there's 231 guaranteed million dollars out there. Because I don't think they ever thought that it, that poker the price of poker would get that high. No, they didn't because you know why? Because no one was expecting the Browns to set to reset the market at that level. Now the Browns, you know, look, they draft Baker Mayfield number one. It does not work. I mean, we we can we can debate all day about you know what Baker is and what he's not, but you draft a guy number one overall and it doesn't work, and you go out and you get Deshaun Watson with everything swirling around Deshaun Watson. Like your 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 plan did not work, and 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 you're cutting bait on Baker Mayfield and you got to make Deshaun Watson work. So you do this. And, you know, I, I know that when that thing was announced or even before it was announced, cause you know, as you know, word like leaks throughout the league before this stuff gets out, I'm sure Bashadi and his people must've been, I, I, I mean, I would not be surprised. I saw them down at the owner's meeting. They were gassed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because, cause you say to yourself, well, this is not going to happen. So, you know, they're thinking, you know, they're thinking all along, they're okay with Lamar um, because they're like, all right, you know, we'll get it done. But then, but then the Watson contract happens, and yeah, it resets everything and, and it resets the the perception. I mean, I can't imagine you know being you know in that type of situation where you're now thinking, uh oh, well, what do we do now? Because you know because of all the factors we just discussed. Jason Reed is our guest on the rise of the black quarterback is the book and what it means for America. You can pick that book up, find it anywhere. You can find Jason at ESPN or in a uh, NFL stadium or locker room uh, near, near you. Uh, the, the the Sean Watson fury that Atlanta got involved in and offended Matt Ryan probably forever, uh, New Orleans, Carolina, where they have their own issues, all in on this. I, I'm a little shocked. I mean, look, I don't give these owners and I've watched what they've done to Kaepernick. Right. I see what they do to me. You know, I I I, I don't. I don't I see them as unscrupulous, but I also I'm sort of shocked that the price of poker on Deshaun Watson, that it, it rose to this level to upset the apple cart for guaranteed money, that the Browns were the, the biggest bidders in this, but that there was a bidding party for a guy with this much baggage that Goodell hasn't even been able to figure this out yet. Right now, we we're, he's going to be suspended. How much? We don't know. But either way, I, I'm a little shocked that the league went all in on him, that four teams did this. And that every Joe Burrow and every player, Lawrence, all of them, they're they're going to wind up getting paid for this. I got to be honest with you, I I, I wasn't shocked, and, and, and let me let me say why. If you have a team that you feel that you have a roster with with the type of youth that you need to have a run, that you have a type of roster with the type of depth that you need to have a run, depth, you know, relatively speaking, the NFL these, these days. And if all you're missing is you think an elite, an elite elite, not just an elite, but a double elite, a guy who is just a, a, a complete star, okay, superstar. If you feel you're missing that guy and that guy's available on the market, 
even with all the baggage, see, those guys don't become available. I mean, they, they just you, you look at the league, the way it's set up right now, there's 32 teams. There's such a dearth of quarterback play in this league in terms of superstar guys who are the last piece. The Browns looked at him as like, you know what, we get this guy. We we can we can compete to get to the Super Bowl. I literally, the more I think about it, the more I think to myself, I would rather just stink for a year and go for the next Trevor Lawrence, you know, get the next Joe Burr, get the next guy, then enter into this with him right now. I mean, I, the, I the, the stench out? around him, it, 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 it's, it's incredible, and it keeps coming back, right? right. It's not they, – they're trying to bury it, try to bury it. Then the Texans are writing checks. I mean, it. Th this is – this, there's no end to this, and, and that's the unfortunate part, I think, for, for everybody. I totally agree with you. I totally get that. But here's the thing you said about waiting for the next guy. Baker Mayfield was the number – they took him number one overall. Well, so was Tim Couch. <laughs> exactly. And so the problem is the next guy actually might not be the guy. So, so when you see – again, these guys don't get traded. Because because it, it, they play the most important position in team sports. And look, if the Browns felt that they were, you know, five years away from competing, they don't do that. The Browns looked at their roster and said, except for the quarterback position where we completely blew it, taking this guy number one overall, we've got a team that can get to the Super Bowl if we have an elite quarterback, if we have a franchise quarterback. It, it 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 was desperation from the standpoint that they met, made such a huge mistake on Baker Mayfield in their minds that they had to go out and try to get a guy who could get them there while they have this roster. Because as we know, hey, the window in the NFL is very small, okay? And, and for them to do what they did and then give them the money, it showed, hey, look, we think we can get to where we want to be, and this is the guy, and this is the time we have to do it. Desperation's a lousy negotiator, isn't it? Jason Reed joining us here. Go get his book, uh, Rise of the Black Quarterback, What It Means for America. Last thing for you, just Lamar and spending time with him. We, I haven't talked to a football player in two and a half years, right, because of the plague. Um, I'm assuming you had some access in 19. I think I saw your team. I was at every game in 19 watching Marshall Yonda blow up holes and healthy Ronnie Stanley. And uh, Second and one, first and ten. Second and two, first and ten. Um, you were a part of all that. What do you make of Lamar? And what's it's going to be the end story for him. He's going to win three Super Bowls and go to the Hall of Fame. I mean, I'm not sure of that. I know he's going to make a lot of money. I'm, I'm not sure. I think that I think that he's going to have to win a Super Bowl to make people stop saying that you know he can't do X, Y, and Z. I mean, look, his game is what his game is. But I think that when you look at what what the Ravens can be with him, I do believe that he can get them deep into the playoffs. Will he ever win multiple Super Bowls? I can't speak to that, but I do believe that the kid wants to be great. I do believe that that the Ravens have put him in an environment where he can maximize his skills. And if they can get this thing done, I think that there's going to be a lot of winning in Baltimore for many, many years to come. Hey, man, good luck with the book, man. It was a great conversation. Come back again sometime when you got the next book coming out, when when you write Lamar Victory 1 and 2 and 3 and all that stuff. It's, it's always great to read you. I appreciate you spending time with me today. Hey, thanks for the time, man. Jason Reed joining us here. The book is The Rise of a Black Quarterback and What It Means for America. It's a real book. It's got pages in it and everything. Uh, and you, you can kindle it as well. And uh, uh, my Purple Rain 1 and 2, I released those out digitally at Baltimore Positive. So it's a summer of reading. Get out and read about football. Football's happening. Luke's out in Owings Mills. He's also at Camden Yards with those upstart Baltimore Orioles. I'm Nestor. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking Baltimore Positive.